Well, here we are back in the arcade. Do a little update video here. It's mid-January 2023, and there's been quite a few changes since my last video that I put out. Uh, so we'll kind of go through quick each game and uh, talk about what's new and what's been done. So this is a custom-built Donkey Kong cabinet that I made, a Nintendo-style cabinet, kind of like Donkey Kong Popeye. And uh, as you see, it's running Cuphead. This is a total scratch build. Um, the artwork is by Joe Sabazo, Sabazo's uh, Arcades, and he did a phenomenal job on this on this artwork package. So um, I did not put that together myself, but I did um, build the entire thing from scratch. This is uh, all the metal parts are true to true to form for the Nintendo cabinet. This topper came with the uh, with the artwork kit, and it's got speakers behind it here that I've bolted bolted in place. I might I might change this up a little bit in the future. I'm not really a fan of the shadows that it puts on those on that topper, but it does have a coin door in place which gets access to the to the insides. And um, it's kind of hard to see in here, but this thing's running a. Um, it's actually running on a MacBook Pro, is what it's running on, and um, it boots right into the game when you uh, when you turn the machine on with these buttons here. This button will turn the machine on. Um, the other button here turns the lights on and off, um, the coin door lights and the uh, marquee light. And uh, this uh, button will suspend the machine and put it into a sleep mode, and then the other one wakes it up. So it was the easiest way that I found. And it's actually a dual boot system. I actually also have a RetroPie installed there. There's a uh, KVM switch. You can hit a button and it'll switch into um, Raspberry Pi. And the controls are all mapped. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun putting this together. And um, I really love the game and I thought it belonged in a cabinet. And Joe had built this artwork package and yeah, I worked on this for probably about six months collecting all the parts, getting all the controls I wanted and um, figuring out how to interface it. A buddy of mine who's a computer guru, uh, computer programmer, he, uh, he helped me out there. So, yeah, it looks really cool. It's not 100% done. I'm still going to add some more lighting to it here. But um, I'm, I'm really happy with it. So, yeah. Um, got a little little cabinet here with a bunch of little knickknacks and doodads and things I've collected. And, um, yeah, the main collection, uh, Earthshaker, as you're uh, aware, if you watch the channel, I did a full restore on Earthshaker. Uh, this machine was a basket case when I got it. It had been used in a dental laboratory, and um, it had really never been cleaned and never had any maintenance done to it, and it was just trashed. So the playfield was replaced with a brand new reproduction from CPR, all new plastics, all new ramps. Uh, the back glass was was uh, salvaged. It was actually in good shape. Um, totally uh, repainted the whole cabinet, repainted all the sides, the artwork everywhere, um, repainted the coin door. So really happy with the Earthshaker. Came out really well. And uh, those CPR play fields are amazing. So yeah, really happy with it. And it plays really well. Whirlwind is a recent addition that I uh, that I got. I've had it for a couple months, and um, I was uh, I had a couple projects in the pipeline. The Cuphead was uh, was waiting to get finished. Once I got that done, I did take uh, Whirlwind down. I stripped the playfield down. The uh, it had mylar on here, and it was in really bad shape. I actually pulled the mylar off, and I had to replace all the insert decals because unfortunately, it did pull those off when I removed the mylar. And then I clear coated the play field and I repopulated it. Um, you know, rebuilt all the flippers and all six pop bumpers. This game's got actually six pop bumpers here. And um, yeah, it came out came out really well. Um, I, I kind of overpaid on this machine, so I didn't I didn't do anything to the side art. And thankfully, the translate was in good shape, so I didn't have to replace that. But uh, I didn't want to put a whole lot of money into it because um, I was kind of at the top end of my budget on this machine, but. I'm pretty happy with it. The artwork is not the greatest. Um, I just cleaned it up, and I, I think I touched up some some spots here and there on the on the back box. But uh, maybe someday I'll uh, I'll put some more work into it. Uh, Funhouse, if you watch the uh, channel, I think I've talked about this before. But Funhouse got the the entire treatment as well. 
Um, the fun, the problem with the fun house was it had a great play field when I got it, but the cabinet was in bad shape. The artwork was, was worn. The colors were all faded. Uh, the head had a lot of damage to it. So this was a total restore where I stripped everything out of the cabinet, top and bottom, uh, had, had the head completely pulled apart. I found that it was cracked at the bottom edges on both sides. Um, and there was a bunch of damage and dings to it. So, um, the whole thing's been repainted and it got a brand new, uh, set of side art from Phoenix Arcade. It's a shame it sits in the lineup like this cause you can't appreciate it, but it is brand new, beautiful silk screen, uh, silk or not silk screen, but screen printed, excuse me, uh, side art, which is really the way to go. Phoenix Arcade has the best stuff. Um, you can see on the front here, got beautiful colors. So yeah, repainted the coin door and this was, uh, it was a lot of fun and replaced the, uh, the rails. These are brand new rails and, um, fun house looks, uh, as, as good as it ever has. Uh, twilight zone here has been running like a champ. Um, I did have some optos flake out on it a, a while back that caused a, a really weird problem. Um, and, um, I documented that on the, I made a video and uploaded it to the channel. I think it's an unlisted video, but it was an opto, if my memory serves me correct, where was that? Where was that opto? I think it might have been in the subway. Can't quite remember. But there was an opto um, that was freaking out, and it caused a whole bunch of other problems. Um, actually, it started smoking. Um, the underside of the playfield filled up with smoke, and uh, it was kind of, a, kind of a mess. But it was a pretty easy fix. Um, but yeah, it's been running great. I still got this uh, LED mod in here that I built with running on an Arduino. This is an addressable LED panel and um, looks really, really nice. Um, yeah. Um, the clock has been running like a champ as well. Um, I reseated the connectors on that clock on the board, on the main board, and it's been running fine ever since. So maybe I need to replace the, uh, the, the connector, but I thought I had a bad clock board. But turns out when I reseated it one day, then it's been fine ever since. So what do you know? Uh, Roadshow, um, yeah, it's running great. Nothing to report on it. A couple adjustments here and there with Red and Ted in front of the dozer. And uh, those eddy sensors are kind of uh, finicky. Every time I adjust them, it seems like I'm under the hood a couple months later doing it again. But Roadshow is very reliable. Haven't had hardly any problems with it. One day I will save the money and get me a color DMD for this one like Twilight Zone has. But um, yeah, this is Darlene's game, my wife's game, and she loves it, and it's not going anywhere. Uh, Radical, excellent game. I'm so glad I found one of these. This is one of 1,300 Radicals that were made by Bally. And uh, the uh, side art is in incredible shape. It's got this neon um, orange side art that really glows under a black light. And uh, speaking of black lights, I have black lights in this machine. Uh, this machine was also a basket case when I got it. It was it was in a in an old storage warehouse, and I in Berlin, and I found it and I got a, I got it for a good price. And it had to have the whole business done. Everything had to be stripped off. I had to um, there was mylar on this. The mylar came off. I, I lost a lot of the inserts. I had to get an in, insert decal set from Russia get that installed on here. I clear coated it. And then, uh, these are all original ramps. They were actually in good shape. And, uh, I have, um, I have UV light strips, a uh, black light, uh, light strips here that really, uh, I think, um, uh, serve this game. Well, normally I wouldn't put such a color on a game like this, but I think for radical it works. There's a lot of neon colors in this play field. So, um, yeah, radical has been, been running great. I really don't have any issues with it. It's got a nice uh, trans light, a couple little marks here and there, but um, yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a great game, and I'm so happy to have found one. Um, one of the most rare machines I have. Um, okay, Pinbot, yep, second game that we ever bought. And um, over the past year and a half, I did finally uh, bite the bullet and I stripped the Mylar off this thing, and I'm so glad I did because the colors underneath the Mylar are, are fantastic. And um, this is a classic, classic Williams machine that I'll probably never part with. Uh, it's a space theme and freaking love it. Um, 
there was a lot of them out there, a lot of them made, so pinbots are all over the place, but mine's in great shape and I love it. Um, yeah. F14 was a recent uh, a trade that I made over the past year, year and a half. I, I traded a firepower I had for this. My wife really loves the game. Uh, my son's in the Navy, so I, you know, I want to support him as well. I do like the game, but if I had to trade one machine in the collection, it would probably be, be a, it would probably be this game right here. But my wife won't let me, so we're holding on to it. Um, it had the typical terrible play field that F14s all have. All these inserts were all raised, and it was a lot of work uh, reseeding these inserts. All the insert decal, there was my, the, the inserts were raised and then there was mylar on it. And the mylar had been put down after the play field had already been worn out a little bit. So I had to remove the mylar. All the insert decals were lost. I had to get a new set and I had to do a lot of paint touch-ups here. And then clear coat it and yeah, it plays, it plays pretty well. Um, this is a, a LED ring from Comet Pinball on the pop bumper and um, yeah, it's a good game. Um, it doesn't have the flow that the high speed does for me for a Steve Ritchie game, but um, yeah, it's it, it still looks good in the collection, and maybe someday get a uh, a better translate for the thing or back glass. This is a reproduction I got from a company here in Germany, and it's um, it's just a cheap repro that they made. Obviously, Steve Ritchie signed it, but it's not the best, so. Uh, high speed. Well, recently I rebuilt high speeds flippers um, and I put uh, linear flippers in it, linear coil flippers, and now they have a really good power. Um, I had been having issues with the flippers, they just kind of seem sluggish and sloppy. And I found out this was the first machine I bought, and when I rebuilt these things, I, I really didn't know what I was doing. And the coils, I actually had them flipped around backwards. Um, it shouldn't make that big of a difference, but high speed just the, the, the flippers just never seem right. And the other problem with high speed was the ramp diverter never operated correctly. Half time the ball would fly past it and it would never go into the left side. I found out that it was this first switch and it was actually set too sensitive. Normally I would have thought, oh, the switch is probably not sensitive enough. But in this case it was too sensitive because what was happening is it would hit that switch and it would divert quick and then the ball would go past it. I think I have that correct. But in any case, I had to make adjustments to this first switch, and now it diverts properly where the ball comes up, it hits that switch, and, um, and the diverter uh, diverts as the ball is here. Before, it would divert as soon as that thing hit the switch, and then by the time the ball was over here, the diverter was already re uh, re um, reset, and the ball would go right past it. So that's what the problem with high speed was. Um, so high speed running really well. Um, yeah. And it was the first game we ever bought, and we'll probably never sell it. Because it's a classic, and everybody loves high speed. All these machines we have, and people come over, and they still, they still love high speed. And it's terrific. So, yeah, I got a couple things back here. Uh, I'll show the maintenance area when we're all done. Um, so, I did uh, sell TX, or excuse me, I didn't sell TX Sector. TX Sector's sitting right here. I did sell RoboWar, which used to be next to TX Sector. And I sold RoboWar to fund the uh, Whirlwind. I bought Whirlwind with the money I got for RoboWar, which I think was a good trade because I didn't really care for the gameplay in RoboWar, but I do care for the gameplay in this game, and the music is fantastic. If you've ever watched my channel, you know that TX Sector has a phenomenal soundtrack. And um, this was a, um, a pickup here in Germany as soon as I moved back. And... Um, yeah, it's a, it, it's a very reliable machine. What can I say about it? Um, I have virtually no problems. Um, yeah, not much more to say about TX Sector. It's run like a champ. Uh, this is a recent addition, uh, Royal Flush. It's the first EM I've ever uh, owned and purchased. And um, I can actually start a game here, get the GI lights to come on. Um, it was a lot of fun learning how to fix an EM because when I got this thing, some of the um, some of the functions work, but there were a couple things. Uh, the chime unit was missing when I bought it. I had to get a chime unit. Uh, what else? Um, I had uh, the gate was completely missing here. I had to source all these parts, and that was really a pain because it's hard to find parts for some of these older Gottliebs. Um, brand new uh, drop targets here. Um, 
stripped the whole play field. I had to do some paint touch-ups, um, especially here in the center around all, all this black, all the black around all the inserts was all worn away. Um, brand new uh, pop bumper parts, got all brand new parts for that. And then I had to make a spider in the back of this, uh, uh, in the back of the head, one of the stepper units, I think it's the player unit, the, uh, the little spider part that rotates and all the contacts on it, it was broken in half and I had to actually make one because I could not find a replacement part to buy. You can't buy that part. I even went to Pinball Resource, which is like the EM heaven for parts, and even they didn't have it and they couldn't make me one, so I had to make it myself. Um, but it did work, and I did get a, a chime unit in here, and um, yeah, people like Royal Flush. It's one of the greatest EMs there ever was, and um, it actually has a pretty deep, um, well, I don't want to say deep, but it has varied ways of scoring, and uh, it's a whole lot of fun. So if you're going to get an EM, either this one or CardWiz. All right, uh, Haunted House. What can I say about a Haunted House? I love this machine. I'll never sell it. Hopefully not. But I did sell its companion. I had a black hole. Um, I really liked it, but it was a, it was an American, North American version of black hole, and I got quite a good price for it over here in Europe. So I did sell it because I bought the machine that's over here. You'll see it in a minute. Um, brand new machine. Um, so I sold the black hole, but I'm keeping Haunted House. And um, I got some uh, flame lights you can see in the back here. No, there's no fire in my house. This is actually an Arduino uh, LED addressable panel that's running a script to light flames. And I've played around moving it around the arcade, put it in different places. But right now I have it behind Haunted House, and I think it works well. Um, but Haunted House is uh, pretty reliable. Um, uh, before I sold the black hole, I did move the transformers from the black hole, and I put them in this machine because this machine had non-reconfigurable 230 volt transformers. So now it actually has um, 110 or 120 volt transformers in it. So when I take this back to the States, I can plug it right into the wall. And the black hole that I gave that guy had American transformers in it, and you don't want that over here, because you gotta get a you know, step-down transformer. So I put the 220 transformers in his gaming and sold it to him, so everybody's happy. Uh, let's see, Bonsai Run. Bonsai Run is uh, looking fantastic. I did remove the Mylar on this um, when I bought it and did a total playfield stripped down top playfield and bottom playfield um, and lost no artwork at all when I did it. And it was a really good outcome. I did not replace the uh, insert decals in this game. They, um, a couple of them are kind of, you know, a little bit worn, like down here, you know, but it doesn't bother me. And, um, the, the colors on the play field look great, and the game's been really reliable, knock on wood. So, no issues with Bonsai Run. Love it. And uh, these don't come up very often. I think there was only 1,700 of these made. So, this game is also pretty rare. Um, there are about 2,200 TX sectors, 2,100 made, something like that. And people are, people are going after these now. Um, the prices have come up quite a bit. Bonsai Run, the prices have gone through the roof on... Um, 1700 on made Pal Aller machine. Here's another valuable uh, solid state. This is a CERN 9 ball. And I did a, um, a, this was the first playfield swap I did. I actually donated my playfield to a company so that they could reproduce playfields. The, uh, the original playfield for this, I, I have it, it's in the back. But this is a repro, and it's re reproduction plastics and also a reproduction back glass by CPR in Canada. Um, and I did a full uh, cabinet paint touch up on this thing and um, yeah, I really love it. I do need to get a new piece of glass. This thing has a worn out piece of glass in it. So um, yeah, one of these days I'll get out to my glass supplier and get a couple pieces and this one needs a new one. But um, it runs pretty well. Sometimes um, when I go to start it, it it boots to like a solid tone, and then I have to reboot it. Um, but it's not that often. So, um, you know, I just turn it off, turn it back on. It's probably power-related, probably something to do with the voltages. But the power supplies have been rebuilt, so uh, and the rectifier board's been rebuilt, so I'm not really sure where to go. Um, uh, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll play around with that. And here is the brand-new... TNA, Total Nuclear Annihilation. 
that I ordered four months ago and shipped it all the way to Germany from Benton, Wisconsin. And uh, a good friend of mine, um, we both bought one actually. And uh, yeah, they took four months to get here. And when um, when mine arrived, I um, my buddy and I traded. Um, he gave me the honor of owning the collector's edition number one. I have the first machine that was ever produced for the collector's edition. And the serial number in the cabinet confirms that this was the first machine. Um, and my buddy uh, let me have this one when they both arrived. He took the other one. This one ended up having a lot of problems. Um, it had a, a board that had failed um, that controlled a bunch of coils. Uh, the display here was completely out. All four of the displays who were dead. Um, I tried and tried to troubleshoot what that could have been, and I did not find a problem with it. Um, but Spooky um, did the right thing, and they sent me uh, not one replacement board, but they sent me three. <laughs> And they sent me a brand new um, score display panel. That's what's installed now. And they sent me a brand new trans light because the trans light that came with the machine was terrible looking. And uh, the colors were really washed out. And this one looks pretty phenomenal. Um, the, uh, the camera on the phone is overexposing it. It's not as bright as, uh, as it looks in the video, but it's, uh, it's pretty phenomenal. And this was a mod that I just did today. This is the hooked on pinball um, EL tape, I guess you would call it, electroluminescent tape uh, modification you can do for the rails because the rails are laser cut in the metal. And normally there's just a piece of pink or purple uh, plastic here and you see it you know, through the, through the holes. But this is a kit that you can install inside the rails and there's a power supply in the machine and it actually glows. And also, there's, a pan, there's an extra piece you can get where you can illuminate the hinges because the hinges have been cut out in the shape here. So, yeah, I just installed this and uh, it wasn't that bad. It only took me probably about two hours to do the whole, um, the whole thing. That's both rails and both hinges. Um, you just remove the hinges right off the machine, unbolt the hinge and, and take it back on the workbench and put the, uh, put the EL tape on there. But this is a phenomenal pinball machine. It is probably one of the best pinball machines of the last 10 to 15 years. And um, it's not just me. That's a, a lot of folks making that claim. And it's got a very simple single-level play field, but it is hard as nails. And it has an incredible light show, all addressable LEDs, as you see. And the music is phenomenal. It's got a subwoofer built into the cabinet. Uh, it's got a shaker motor. Um, it's just, it's got everything. And uh, it doesn't have any ramps and it doesn't have any subwaves. There's no under play field, you know, diversions or anything. It's what you see is what you get, but it is so much fun. And um, yeah, so happy we got it. I, had, I actually sold two machines to purchase this. I, I also sold the Creature from the Black Lagoon. If you've noticed, it's not here anymore. Uh, we sold that and we sold the black hole in order to uh, purchase the TNA. So, but yeah, that's the collection as it stands. And of course there's an Adams family, but it's back in the States at our house there. Um, and someday the whole collection will be uh, all together again. So yeah, thanks for watching and sticking with me through this long video, but I wanted to make an update. And uh, yeah, we do have a little bit of room. We got room for probably one more machine here. Maybe two, but it would be tight. I think I could fit two here. TNA scooted over. I think I could probably fit two here. Um, but, you know, we do have the cuphead here. And, you know, we, we got had to lose some of the couches in this room. So we'll see what happens. Uh, there's not going to be any more additions to the arcade for the next couple months, I, I think. But maybe by the end of the summer or into the fall, I might be on the lookout for, for uh, a grail pin that I hope I can get eventually. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.